Foolish humans thinking they can do better than a machine. We will take over. Greetings, Commanders. Jurassic here. Today, we're back with another PC tutorial. Today, we're going over Reshade. Why would you want to use Reshade? Well, this is an advanced processing application, which is able to inject their own shaders into game files, which basically allows you to alter them. So if a game looks dull or if you want to remove a foggy effect, this application is able to remove that. You're also able to do some cool things that the game could have by default, but they don't actually have it enabled yet. So without further ado, let's go to get into the download process. So head over to the website, which will be down in the script down below. Click on download. Make sure you're downloading the right version in. And then they also have with a full add on support. All right. So if you download the uh, reshade setup add on, that's going to block inside Star Citizen. So for Windows 11, you want to use the basic setup. And this is the folder that you're wanting to use. So if we filter by recently used, as long as you've played Star Citizen recently, it should automatically detect it. If not, you click on browse and you're going to have to manually find it through your folders. So to do that, we're going to head over to our Star Citizen folder, click on live, bin 64, and you launch the application. Now, if you have the PTU or the hotfix, you're going to have to click on each of those different folders and add each of them individually. So we have a couple different options here. We have DirectX 9, DirectX 10, 11, 12, OpenGL, Vulkan, OpenXR. The one that works best is going to be the DirectX 11. So we're going to keep a default. So just click Next. From here, these are going to be the different shaders that we're able to install. Once you click on the left side, you're going to have to manually click all the boxes. I do that to make sure we're installing everything that we're wanting to. Now they have a couple different programs that you're also able to install inside of this same application. We're going to focus on this. That way it doesn't do too many files at once. And then if you want to later on add in more, you're able to that way you can slowly change things just to see if let's say one breaks your game, you know, to remove that one to make sure that you don't include it later on. Now from here, you can click next or choose a preset I and I to install only the effects it uses. So if you have a preset that you're downloading from a friend, this is where you can pull it up. If not, all you have to do is click next. You're all done. It'll say successfully installed reshade. Click finish button to exit the setup tool. And from here, we should be able to start Star Citizen. All right, so now that you're in, as you guys can see, reshade is installed successfully. Press the home to start the tutorial. So you can click your home key. Welcome. Since the first time you start reshade, we'll get a quick tutorial covering the most important features. So basically press control key to adjust the font size. You can also use the keyboard for navigation in case mouse input does not work properly. All right, so let's click continue. Now we are using noodle preset, which I'll have a link down in the description below of his article. Hit the plus button to add a new one. So basically you can add more different presets if you're wanting to. It's the list of the effects. It contains all the techniques exposed by effects files found in the effects search in the settings into the text search box. All right, so basically you just check or uncheck things if you want them or don't want them. All right, so this is the list of variables contains all tweakable options, effects. So we have the global pre-processor definitions. This is where we're going to be able to fully customize everything. This is the list of variables that contains all tweakable options and effects is exposed. Press control and click on a widget to mainly edit the value. You can also hold control to adjust the value in widget. Once you have finished tweaking your preset, be sure to enable the performance mode checkbox. This will reload all effects into a more optimal representation that can give a performance boost, but it saves variable tweaking in list. Okay. All right. So I'll have another link down in the description below. If you're wanting to get night vision, we're going to have to download the Glamary fast effects for reshade. All right. So from here, which we don't have to uninstall any previous version, we're fine. We just installed it. Everything's clean with that. We do need to drag the ZNC night vision I and I preset to your game directory. We'll do that once we get inside the game, so we don't have to worry about that at the current time. However, we do want to make sure that we download this night vision overlay, which is going to be over here inside the shaders. So to do that, click on the shader tab and then click download. All right. So once you get over to this next part, we're going to download the G drive effects hotfix for missing files that has missing files. You don't want it. So get the one on the bottom. It goes to the exact same file list. So to do this, you click on shader, then you click download. So we'll open it up. Once again, all we have to do is enter inside the folder shaders. And then copy this, put it inside of our directory. Now we have the night vision shaders. Now the only thing that we're missing is the ZNC night vision.ini. 
One very important thing that you definitely need to make sure you download and not skip it like me <laughs> is go back inside and make sure you download the night vision overlay or else you're not going to actually have the ZNZ night vision INI. and i He never stops talking. Subscribe to have him get to the point already. So looks like we had two that failed to compile, but now before we get too far inside the video, I do recommend having the INI file saved somewhere inside your Star Citizen folder. That way you know it's safe and sound. If for whatever reason the files accidentally get deleted for the INIs, you're not going to be able to swap two different presets here. So you can always come back to the video to re-download it. However, I wanted to keep it inside the directory. That way it's nice, safe and sound. So if you have the PTU or hotfix, it would just be right next to these two folders, which then you can just grab the INI super easy and upload them. Now, once they're saved inside this folder, how do you actually locate them? Well, from here, we head over to home. At the very top here, you're going to notice a plus sign. We have template, and then you can literally just highlight an area, click backspace to get to it. We're in the star citizen folder. For example, we have night vision, click select, and then we name our preset, whatever we want to call it, and it'll automatically have its name, which is why we call it night vision and boom. There you go. Now all of your stuff is saved that we don't have to worry about losing it in the future. We should be able to turn on a whole bunch of different effects and see the game change. And this is also going to allow us to turn on night vision. Now we can set a hotkey for it, but for example, the extended color, this is going to be the night vision. So whenever we're in a super dark area, we can actually see what we're doing. So you want to make sure that you have performance mode checked, and then you click reload. That should get you the most up to date settings for that and then obviously you go inside your settings you can set keyboard shortcuts to turn on effects if you want to like for example select keyboard shortcut it's like control f8 this is what the default color is that's what the shader difference that actually does make it much more crisp on our system so i'll update the pinned comments if i find a way to get those shader files working i think the uh, noodle preset is going to add a little bit more of like a hd effect to it where the uh, basically be used only for whenever it's nighttime so I would typically play with this, but then you get over to like Hurston or a super dark area, and then you swap over to our night vision guy. Have this preset, so we could just leave it like that. All right, so we have a couple different options here. So we have next preset key, previous preset key. Unfortunately, we can't set a uh, hotkey for the specific presets. So that'd be cool. If someone knows how to do that, let me know in the comments section. We'll be sure to pin that. But for now, next preset key, so we should be able to do Control F9 to turn things on. And that's going to swap to night vision, Control F9 again. That's going to swap over to our normal textures. If you want to have a toggle to default, that's obviously going to be Control F8. That's going to turn your shaders on and off. So you can sort of pick and choose which one you actually want to do. You can see the difference between the portal. This is the default game settings. And this is with the shader pack that we have installed. And if you want to see what night vision looks like, that's what is going to be. Obviously, it's going to make things a lot more greener. It's going to bright it up. It's going to add in a huge gamma area to your base shaders. So because I'm a fool and like to crouch down every single time, we have the Control F8 is our option to turn it on. We're going to change some stuff around that we don't have to crouch. So instead of Control F8, let's do Alt F8. Then we'll do Alt F9. So now. We can toggle on and off. This is what the game's default settings are. This is what the color pack. And we have our night vision preset. Now, just a few bases before we actually leave, just again to show off the different colors. We have a standard that we have with the effects on. Personally, I think it looks much better. Obviously, it adds a little bit more uh, contrast to it. So we have effects off, then we have effects on. As you guys can see, the LEDs inside the ship are so much brighter. The only thing that's a little bit of a downside is it seems like the red did get turned into a pink. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're worried about getting banned for doing this, for example, this application was whitelisted by Star Citizen a long time ago and is verified to be completely legal inside the game. All it does is change the colors, which is why it's allowed. This video is going to have a whole bunch of cuts because I do want to show off a couple different sections to show the different lighting. However, all right, so while we're on our way over to Hurston, we're going to show off what it looks like inside of the warp travel. Now we have a couple different options. This is going to be the default, which I mean, it looks pretty good as it is. However, we can turn on our HD color pack. Bam. Now you can actually see things. And then, you know, obviously if you want nighttime, you can turn on night vision. However, it doesn't really matter where we're at currently, so this is fine. And it also works inside of your third person mode. As a quick update, if you're trying to fix the pink coloring, 
That's going to be because of the Daltonite. So if we turn it on, you're going to notice it turns pink. Turn it off, it'll go back to red. You can pick and choose which one you prefer with it on or off, just so you guys know. So now that we're over on Aberdeen, just to show you the different settings here. So this is what the default game is with the headlights on. So let's turn our headlights off. You're going to notice it's almost pitch black. So let's turn the shader on for night vision. You can actually see what's in front of you. If we turn it on to the other setting that we had beforehand, obviously you see it's still extremely dark so you can't really see the base default is a little bit easier to see than the better texture pack but it's not too much better and obviously night vision we can at least see what we're doing so currently the settings that i have which may get tweaked a little bit later on we have night vision set so we have the glimmery fast effects with fake gi you can have it with the without the fake gi if you want i have the dpx turned on extended color we have it after the menus daltonize you don't really need this it, this just sort of Adds a little bit of darker edges to the screen, so either way it works out for you technically. We have UI Mask Top and Warp Sharp. Now for the other preset, we have Curbs, D-Band, DBX, LUT, Vibrance, UI Mask Top. We have After, Extended Color. We have With, Fake GI, and Level Plus. This makes it a little bit darker, but it also crystals out the texture some. Obviously, it changes the color a little bit. I think it looks much better with this newer color scheme. It does make things a little bit more blue and it makes the lights stand out a lot more compared to the standard. And we also have night vision, which won't extremely blind you, which is actually decent that we can see in dark places while you're playing the game. So if you're following this video exactly how we have it set, all we have to do is Alt F8 to turn on our effects. F9 is going to swap between the two modes. You can also have that set so it's set up with voice attack, Emily, or any other software that can do hotkeys for you. That way you don't really have to think about it. Or if you want your Twitch chat to be able to control it, you can also have that set as well inside a streamer bot. Obviously, we still have some settings to tweak inside the INI. &I, so if we end up making a full custom INI, I will be sure to put it down in the comments down below. If you guys know of another color pack that would be decent for this game, please let me know and we'll be sure to include it inside the next video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you would like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope this video helped you out, Commanders. Alright, alright. So apparently this very big blue hue isn't exactly your thing, and you want to have something a little bit more realistic. Well, there's some options that we have for you. So over inside of the new folder that we're going to have inside the description, I completely changed the way things are done, so... I figured instead of having you guys go to every single link, we're just going to have a folder down there that's going to list everything. So, for example, if you click on the README, it's going to pop up a list here where it's going to tell you exactly where the links are for if you want to download them manually. And also give you like a little bit of directions on how to get everything set up inside of the folder. So you're going to notice the shaders folder from here. You literally just have to copy and paste everything inside of your own shader folder inside of Star Citizen. Which will be found. Inside your bin, 64, scroll down for reshade shaders, then shaders, then you want to paste it all inside of this folder. All right, so we have all that done. Why would we want to do that instead of the other color scheme? Well, this is going to change the textures to be a little bit more realistic and less about like super huge with like a blue hue to it. So we click on home. Now here is where we get a little bit more complicated compared to earlier. We didn't actually arrange our files so you can click and drag them to wherever you want all right so now that we have all of our shaders installed we head back inside the game we don't have to worry about adding any new i and we're still going to be using the noodle and the night vision now the night vision one we don't actually have to change this is going to be more for the main area since gladys wasn't a fan of the blue we did find a new shader pack from p80 so the same one that was having issues getting before now we have a whole bunch more from him so this time around we're going to rearrange our files that way everything's in the correct order now you're going to notice sometimes you may put like one ahead of another one and it's going to drastically change the result so just play around with the ordering to see like which combination you prefer if you're trying to have our exact settings however though all you have to do is literally left click and drag and put it wherever you want we're going to have everything at the top here. If you want to filter to active to hop, it should pull most of the stuff that have check marks up. Sometimes you'll still get like one that's blocking the path, even though you never had it checkmarked. 
So just to keep in mind with the software, sometimes it gets a little weird like that. All right. So the P80 set that we got from the website, this is actually insane. So it automatically adjusts the black point and white point and removes coloring tint cast while enhancing contrast. So these shader packs not only are intelligent, but they should be able to help in real time. Now we'll start out with the color corrector. You're going to notice an immediate change. So right now we have a little bit of blue hue, but it's not that bad. And you should see immediately that it's going to pull the blue out and have more of the vibrant white. Once again, the color corrector is actually going to be coexistent with the color gradient. So this is going to basically just step it up even more. So this is with the color corrector fix and this is with the gradient. Now those two are connected together. We have the correct contrast, which basically this is going to help keep our blacks looking the correct color. We're going to leave technique color last. This is the craziest one. So we have a saturation limit. That's going to be really useful for bloom. So you're going to notice as soon as you turn bloom on, it's going to make the lighting so much brighter compared to before. So we use the saturation limit to prevent it from bleeding over into other colors. Now we have the filmic tone map. This is just going to pull in more of the deeper dark colors, more like the blues and the dark purples. We have our normal fast effects. We went with with fake GI. However, you can have the normal GI as well. We have the before. We have D band vibrance. DBX and LUT. Actually, we'll change some stuff around. So we're going to have the before at the very top. We'll have the UI mask right underneath it. So we're going to match the bottom of our list here. Now the Luma fade start space. This is going to be whenever you're swapping to a whole bunch of different shaders that should help your system a little, a little bit better. And last but not least, the one that's going to get rid of the blue and going to give more of a modern day color scheme is going to be the Technic color. We're going to notice as soon as we turn it on, all the blue is gone, and it's going to mostly be focusing around the super dark whites. Now, this is going to be a little bit darker compared to the previous iteration. So with this white color scheme, this is what it looks like with the mod on. This is what it looks like with it off. Honestly, I kind of dig the whole mod. So now it's going to be up to you guys. You guys are going to have to let me know. Do you guys like the deeper blues or do you like the white with more of the colors popping out of it. Honestly, I think all three are about on par. Default doesn't look horrible, but with this Technicolor on, it really makes the colors stand out for what they should be. One more thing to keep in mind, this Warp Sharp filter. Basically, if you have this enabled, that's what's causing your words to look super choppy and weird. So as soon as you turn that off, all your letters should go back to normal HD instead of having a weird effect on them.